What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash entitled parents. This story's called, Narcissistic Grandma Alienates Family to the Point of Denying Husband a Funeral. Okay, since my friend has encouraged me to share more entitled parent stories, here's the first to my first story involving my own father. This is my second story, but I've given permission to my friend to post it here for me. English is my first name, but I don't mean anything else. Anyway, this isn't about my own parents, but rather one of my mother's, namely her mother, aka my maternal grandmother. Now to sum up, my mother is a very sweet, extroverted woman, who if you had to pick at least one negative thing about her, is her hyperactivity. This is in part due to a medical condition, which I will not be naming to keep some sense of anonymity, I'm assuming, which actually almost killed her when giving birth to me, as well as when she was young as six and does cause her notable pain when it's active as her own body literally attacks her. This condition was inherited from both her parents and while her father, my grandfather, handled it very well despite back when my mother was young, it wasn't the best understood condition and was an equally social individual who'd do anything to help. Her mother, my grandmother, did not. Some of the stories told by my mother of her own mother when young paints her as a narcissist, always trying to show a great image, but crap talks behind people's backs. Honestly, I think she wanted the image of having kids, but didn't want to have the attention taken away from her by the kids. As a lot of the stories hinted a weird jealousy towards her own kids, especially when my grandpa gave my mother or her brother attention like a decent parent, or would actively encourage or promote actions in which my mother or brother could potentially be hurt, which never worked, thankfully. But one thing out of all the stories my mother told me, especially when she got sick, and even when she was literally dying at an age, not even in the double digits, her mother was worse off. Now, here's where I actually came into the picture in interacting with this woman. Admittedly, when I was younger, I kinda had an issue with male figures, thanks to my own father, so I really fell for my grandmother's sweetness and didn't overly trust my grandfather. As I got older though, I really started to see what the heck this woman was like. Some of the highlights I noticed in particular was the fact she would try to baby me much like a five-year-old or younger in a somewhat aggressive way with comments like, you didn't stay little, or little hints at her disdain at her ever-increasing age and messed up health. Keep in mind this woman had the same health conditions as my mother, who actively looked after herself and never let it stop her being active. While grandmother smoked like a chimney, ate unhealthy, and never exercised, which ultimately made her gain weight and made her condition worse. Yet somehow, she was the victim and we had to feel sorry for her. Continuing on, I'd heard stories about how they, my grandparents, helped their kids go to university, which is a lie confirmed by my uncle, mother's brother, and grandmother grandfather. They sent a bit of money, not a lot, but nothing else after, and that they worked their asses off to put themselves through school. The weird part though is because both my mother and brother were separate in distance, both were convinced that their parents helped to put the other through the university until the lie was confirmed. Admittedly, this started to really get me wary as I, at the time, 10 years, felt it was off and after the confirmation of the lie, I being the nosy and smart bastard I was, later discovered it originated from my grandmother boasting to anyone who she could tell, I guess, to make herself look better. Now, if you look at my last post, you'll know that my mother had a very good job with money not being a huge issue, and had also been very successful in her art and being very popular locally at local shows due to her social nature. She actually told me once that she never once has heard grandmother praise her in anything, so me being a little crap decided to test this when the grandparents call. I was talking with grandmother and was talking about my mother's success and how talented she was, etc., with very blatant and obvious opportune chances any normal parent or even person could probably say something positive. This was the second event that really made me feel disgust for this woman. The third event actually came when we went to visit in person. I had just left my dad for maybe about a year now, and grandfather was very kind and supportive while grandmother did her usual poor me crap. Between all the crap I went through with my dad and the bullying, somehow she was worse off always. Heck, at the time, I had been recently hung by necklaces around my neck on school hooks by bullies and even choked. I was, and still am, very small, and back then was much smaller than most kids. 
As a result, I kind of developed discomfort of anything near my neck, especially people, which I warned everyone, even family about, as I'd very likely lash out in response if I felt in danger. When we were about to leave, grandparents wanted a hug. Not very abnormal, but when I got to grandmother, wanting her to be careful around my neck, she brings me into a, a hug, which was more like a headlock around my neck. With her babying behavior and me getting anxious, I warned her to let go by the time I get to my second warning, which involved the promise I can't guarantee I won't react physically. It took my mother and grandfather literally prying her off me and me needing to be comforted by my mother on the way out. Not much happened after that, and we never saw them again physically. There was always the same, poor me, than usual, whenever they called, and they even missed my mother and stepdad's wedding because grandmother made a point to ensure they couldn't go, forcing granddad to stay as she was very dependent on him since she never left their home unless it was for her. Granddad eventually developed dementia, and thus the two were forced to enter an elderly home, much to my grandmother's delight as attention all for her. We actually ended up hearing about all the lies she was telling the workers at the home, painting me and my mother as ungrateful and abandoning them. In truth though, we just didn't want to deal with her and honestly couldn't really go see them as between limited personal time, our own issues, and cost to visit, only to be exposed to her increased toxicity. Yeah, none of us wanted to deal. The funny thing is, she was telling the workers about all the expensive things she and granddad paid for us, including lessons and courses for fun sports activities. A lie I thought was funny as hell as one course for said activity was actually initially paid by my dad when I was still living with him, not grandparents. It actually got so bad, workers actually called both my mom and uncle for the truth, even though they even by their own admission knew it was all lies. Apparently, according to some of the information and stories I got from family, the workers despised when they had to tend to her. But the final nail in the coffin that actually came and resulted in absolute alienation of grandmother and no contact came after granddad passed. Granddad was a kind man who would help everyone and honestly was in love love with grandmother, even if she wasn't the greatest person, and stayed with her till the end of his days, but he was easily manipulated by her. As a result, no money was put towards the funeral, and thanks to grandmother, no one wanted to come to any funeral simply because she would be there. I think the worst aspect, though, was we had to find out about Granddad's passing through Uncle, who only found out in the most roundabout way via old friends of Granddad who checked in on him. Because, again, Granddad had dementia, so it wasn't all there, and Grandmother, who had to keep up her image of poor her, made sure not to include contact info to any family. So in the end, she took her entitled narcissistic behaviors to the point of alienating her own kids and all remaining family to not leap in to attend or make a funeral for a great man of the family happen, and denied him that right even despite having the money to have one, just so she could have it for herself. We heard a bit from the workers at the home here and there after we got the number to the home of her actions and granddad's death. We were all disgusted. From what we heard, granddad was cremated and his ashes were spread along walks he frequented. We however cut ties with grandmother entirely and planted a tree in his memory from the location in which he lived on our property. Rest in peace, Granddad. I'm honestly really easy to manipulate too. Uh, at least I think I've gotten out of the worst of it, but <laughs> I'm really easy to manipulate, especially if you're a nice girl. Especially if you wear a sundress. Yeah, I'm done then. Anyways, yeah, that woman sounds uh, terribly disgusting to be around, and that man had to live with her. Also, I'm pretty sure dementia can be caused from plaque buildup in the brain, and plaque builds up when you don't sleep. So sleep deprivation can lead to dementia in the long term. So maybe this guy was stressed out of his mind every night because this woman was constantly whining and crying and whining and crying and whining and it drove him to dementia in the long run. But that's what she did. Good job, entitled mother. Alrighty, this story's called Entitlement 35,000 Feet in the Air, Prologue. 
I bring you one of the most exhausting encounters I ever had in my life. One that put my patience to a test and made me consider quite seriously attempting to open a plane emergency door to take the plane down alongside my sanity. Intro. The year is 2017. I'm leaving my country for the first time on my own to attend a work-related convention in the USA. I don't handle flights well. Not a phobia thing. It's a physical thing. The change of altitude messes me up. Plus, I was nervous because it was my first time on my own going the furthest I'd ever gone outside my country. The flight, which was going to take off around 1 p.m., got delayed to 1 a.m. the next day. I was tired of going and returning from the airport and then going again. I just wanted to sleep. I put the headphones on and find that the plane has a great music collection. I pop Black Star, the last album by David Bowie, and let myself be lulled to sleep by the thin white duke himself. The cast, me, entitled mother, child. Now what you think? The story. 3 a.m., 35,000 feet over South America. I managed to sleep, guided to the land of hypnos by the liquid velvet voice of Ziggy Stardust when suddenly, somebody from the other side of the hallway, the plane had two columns of seats on each side of the hallway, shakes me awake. Excuse me? <sighs> Excuse me? I wake up, my eyes darting around the darkened cabin, attempting to focus on who was talking to me. Finally, I get my bearings and I see Entitled Woman, a woman around 40 to 50 years old, extremely thin to the point of looking unhealthy, with a twisted bird's nest of auburn hair atop her head. She had poked me with her long, fake green nails and was wearing a somewhat flimsy floral dress that clearly was at least a couple sizes too big for her. She had orangish skin, surely from getting her tan out of a can rather than the sun, and had big 50 style eyeglasses, the ones with the colored oval frame. Sorry, I didn't want to wake you up, but I need help. Wait, what? I need help. I can't figure out the screen. She pointed at the screen in front of her, the same one I used to get my dose of Major Tom. I was a bit confused, a little bit bothered by her actions, but I was raised to be helpful, or attempt to be helpful, so I tried to help her, whispering to avoid waking up other passengers. What's the problem? I don't know a lot about how this works, but I'll try to help. Perfect. Just tell me how to put on a movie for my baby. I start explaining. At least I attempt to guide her as much as I can while wondering where is her child. Maybe he went to the bathroom because the seat beside her was empty or that's what I could perceive through my drowsy eyes. I finally managed to get the movie she wanted to watch. Dr. Doolittle, the Eddie Murphy one, and attempt to sleep again. She didn't even thank me. I turn around and ball up, attempting to sleep again. I don't know how much time passes before she wakes me up again. Excuse me? Her emerald claws prickle my back once again. Excuse me? What? I turn around, now a bit pissed. She doesn't seem to notice I'm considering if a charge of manslaughter, maybe Karen slaughter, isn't too bad at the moment. She now has a blanket over her shoulder surrounding her body. My baby wants to see another movie. He's very nervous. It's his first flight. I'll help, but you should talk to the flight attendant. I was trying to sleep. Sorry, it will be the last time and I didn't want to bother her. She seemed to be sleeping when I went to the toilet. <laughs> Once again, I gather my patience and attempt to help. Oh, but I realize something. There is no child. Once again, the chair is empty. I realize she had the blanket the last time, and soon I realize who she was talking about. <laughs> I stop in my tracks and see the head of a chihuahua popping out her blanket. Yes, people. She was talking about her dog, as this airline allowed small animals into the cabin. I stop in my tracks and I look at her. I look at her in silence for a long time. She looks at me, not understanding what's happening, and then tracks my eyes that are looking at her dog. She smirks and chuckles, trying to pass it off as something fun. I don't even say anything. She sees my eyes and realizes the gift gig is up. I silently turn around trying to sleep again, putting good old Jareth on blast to avoid any further interruptions from the entitled mother and her child. That's incredibly creepy. I'm sorry, but 
that is weird you people i understand you love your pets a lot and they are a part of your family okay i've had pets before currently don't have any but i'm gonna change that as soon as i can but this is past that fine line uh between weird slightly strange and concerning okay this this past that line at least 30 miles back that's just disturbing don't don't do that especially if some guy's trying to sleep and <laughs> just obviously i don't i don't condone waking up flight attendants if they're asleep obviously that's their job but i just that's not something i would ever want to do um unless it was an emergency i'm just confused as to why it's okay to wake up a paying passenger as opposed to a flight attendant who's being paid to do the very thing you woke up a passenger for anyways uh very glaring gaps in the logic department of this woman's brain this story is called don't dress like that in front of my kids just another story about my boyfriend's crazy entitled aunt and cousin this happened in the summer of 2018 you know the aunt from this post and the cousin from this one my boyfriend cyrus name changed and i were on our way to a dinner party and stopped by at his parents home because he needed to drop off something his dad had asked for as he went to see his dad in the study i parked the car and then went into wait in the living room his mom greeted me with her usual warmth his aunt and cousin along with cousin's gaggle of children were there too. Cousin greeted me, then gave me a once over and whispered something to her mom, i.e. Cyrus's aunt. They waited until Cyrus's mom had left the room, before aunt said to me, you know, you really shouldn't dress like that in front of the children. It's a bad influence on them. What do you mean, dress like that? We're going to a dinner party. I'm dressed appropriately. I was wearing a black one shoulder pencil dress. Well, your legs are exposed. I don't want my kids to think that it's okay for a woman to dress this way. You should go home and change, or at the very least, go outside and wait in your car. I'm five foot eight and I have long legs, but my outfit really wasn't showing a lot of skin. Certainly not enough to warrant this kind of reaction. Besides, her kids were playing at the other side of the room and didn't pay any attention to me, so I have no idea why she was acting like this. <laughs> Damn it, I knew I should have just worn the bikini. Do you think you're funny? As they were babbling, Cyrus entered the room. They didn't see him. He had heard what they were saying and clearly didn't like what he heard. Aunt and cousin never talk crap in front of him as he has chewed them out in the past. He asked cousin why aunt and cousin couldn't dress better. Did they really think it was okay for cousin's kids to see them dressed in tacky saris? They should really go home and change. When they acted indignant, he simply asked, Oh, I'm sorry. Do you feel insulted that someone is commenting on the way you dress? They obviously had no answer. Cousin gave me one last angry look as we were leaving and I gave her a smile. Oh, you see, I had a feeling that they were, um, probably Indian. The aunt's cousin and mom and the cousin's kids all in the same house. The aunt and cousin making really mean comments that are subtly not so subtly disguised as, you know, advice sort of and then the sorry thing just gave it away obviously but anyways <laughs> this 100 percent happened no doubt in my mind don't forget to like subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode